to uh, tell you about the show. You just got to get all the right ones. Okay. <laughs> uh, I have to clarify, it's two time Emmy. Oh, my right. mistake. My mistake. Two time. No, actually, I'm two time Emmy nominated. Um, uh, I've been, it's won several Emmys, but had nothing to do with me winning them, right? Mm -hmm. I've, I've been nominated twice uh, for an Emmy. And I remember the first time I got nominated, I was picking, I got the email, and I was picking my daughter up from uh, dance class. And uh, she got in the car, she was about 12. And she's telling me about her day. And I'm like, hey, hold on, hold on. Hold on. Before you, I want to hear all about it and everything. But uh, before we go further, can you, from now on, like when you're talking about me and I'm not around, can you refer to me as your Emmy nominated father? <laughs> I was like, what do you mean? I was like, you know, like, you know, instead of saying my dad's picking up from dance, I need you to say my Emmy nominated father. Is <laughs> dance, or, you know, I'm going to spend the weekend at my Emmy nominated father's house. Like, You're Emmy nominated? I said, yeah, I'm Emmy nominated. She's like, a real Emmy? I said, yes, a real Ohio Valley regional Emmy. <laughs> so I really love, she looks at me, she's like, aw, that's cute. <laughs> It's the same statue. <laughs> so, uh, I'll, um, I, I'm from Columbus, Ohio. Born and raised here my entire life. Grew up on the hilltop, uh, and then when I was in high school, we moved out to uh, King Lincoln, Long and Champion, and uh, you know, love my city. Only other place I've ever lived is the Cayman Islands. I used to live in the Cayman Islands for a long time, but then moved back to the states in 2000, and. Um, you know, this is what I get to do for a living. Like when I'm not performing or, or working in TV or film, uh, I get to talk and work with uh, youth and adults, artists, activists, entrepreneurs about adding process to your passion. And I think one of the first things you have to figure out as you're adding process to your passion is, uh, you know, who de defining who you are. You know, who am I? Why am I? Uh, and that's one of my and one of the things I really care about, especially when I'm working with young people, uh, because I tell them all the time, if you don't define who you are, someone else is going to define you for you. And most likely it won't be for your benefit, it'll be for theirs so that they can take advantage of you. So defining who you are and, you know, to use the, the topic, uh, uh, you know, put it into letting other people define who you are, where you're headed, and what your story is, is the first step to adding the process to your passion. But before I can give to anybody, like I meet with people and talk to people all the time and work with people all the time, I had to give it to my own two kids. And I started with them when they were really young, particularly with my son. Um, and I sat him down when he was like five years old um, and because I wanted him to understand who he is, right? And, uh, and so I'm going to help him figure it out. Now I do jokes. I'm a comic. I do stand up all the time. I don't know how much we're going to get into that to this morning. I didn't know that was going to be part of the bio. Um, but I, I will tell you all this true story. This really, really happened when my son was uh, five years old. I sat him down because I wanted to know who he is, so I'm explaining to him. I'm like, okay, Mateo, you know, your, your mom is black and daddy's Latino, so you're black and Latino. He said, I'm not black. I said, what do you mean you're not black? He said, I'm not black, I'm brown. I was like, no, 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 you are black. He said, Mommy's not black. I said, Mommy's not black. He said, Mommy's light brown. I was like, No, 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 no. You are not getting it. You are not getting it. I said, I said, I'm explaining to you. I said, well, Hold on. I said, If Mommy is light brown, um, what does that make, Daddy? I swear to God, he said, You're dark white. <laughs> I thought it, but I didn't say it. But I love my kids, I love the life. Uh, my daughter, like she's really passionate about theater and, and music, and she really cares about uh, saving the planet, going green, recycling, like that's something that gives her a sense of purpose and, and, and meaning aside from what she does creatively. And that Mike told me to get a smart car. Uh, it's baked, it's been baked for years. Get a smart car. Not, they get on my, like, I don't know if any of y'all have a smart car. I love you. I hate your car. <laughs> I, I want to trip them when they drive by. But she, I love that she found something that, that she's passionate about. My son 
he, he just graduated from high school, uh, and, and so he's on, uh, it continues his journey of discovery of figuring out who he is, where he's at, and what his, what his story is. Um, last story I'll talk about, about my kids, and then I'm going to move into like why, why we're all here. Because um, this happened kind of recently, it's, it's funny. Um, my, we were at a family reunion, and I overheard my son telling some of his out-of-town cousins that he lived in the hood. <laughs> and I was like, bro, because I'm like, this is this, that's that your identity? Like, what, how do you want to, I'm like, uh, like, I worked way too hard to give you way more than what I had growing up, you know what I'm saying? Like I said, I'm, I'm the hilltop and lonely champion, and, and uh, like, we really struggled growing up, and I tried to do better than you, and so, like, let's clarify something really quickly, okay? <laughs> You are not from the hood. You are from Westerville. <laughs> <laughs> you live on a cul-de-sac, <laughs> and your three best friends are named Carly, Tanner, and Keegan. <laughs> and anytime you have a best friend named Keegan, <laughs> you do not live in the hood. <laughs> My thing with, with my kids and, and with myself is, you know, I just want them to appreciate everything they have. And I think what one of the most, one of the keys to being miserable and non-productive in your creativity is to compare yourself to someone else. Comparison to me kills creativity, can kill creativity, and and and. and Kills our opportunity to thrive in, in life, and and, um, and so, that, so that's why I tell people all the time: comparison is the key to misery. You want to live a miserable life, compare your life to, to some, somebody else's. And, and and so what I did for myself to kill comparison um, and put it into uh, a more mentality, because when you compare yourself to others, it you know. In the, inevitably, okay, well, I need to do more, I need to have more, I need to be more uh, um, in, in comparison to others, right? And, um, and so what I did to kill comparison was to develop, uh, a, and I hate that this rhymes, but an attitude of gratitude. I have a grateful heart. I'm, I strive to always be thankful and full of thanks, right? Uh, and, and I tell my kids, you know, wake up thankful, spend that day hopeful, go to bed grateful. Um, you know, miserable people focus on everything they do not have. That's what comparison is. It's forcing you to focus on what you do not have, what you are not doing, where you are not at, who you are not with. Um, thankful people, people who are thriving, and I, I try to stay away from the word happiness, and I'll get into that if we have time. Um, but thankful people and thriving people focus on and are grateful for everything they do have. You know, we find what we're looking for. If you go looking for everything you don't have, it's really easy to find. Just open up your phone and start scrolling through your timeline on IG, Twitter, Facebook. You'll find everything you don't have. Um, because if we're honest with ourselves, that's what we spend a lot of our time on social media doing, is comparing our lives to other people's. And, and um, the research is already in. Um, the more time you spend on social media, the higher level of stress, anxiety, depression, you'll experience. Um, because we're spending that time comparing our, you know, how many likes do they have, how many likes do I have, how many followers do they have, how many followers do I have, where are they at, where am I at, what am I doing, what are they doing, where are they wearing, what am I wearing, what are they eating, what am I eating, you know, all these things that contribute to our misery, right? Um, and, and so, as an entertainer, I had to be, it was becoming very, it was way too toxic social media. I'm on there, you can find me there, but you're going to be very uh, bored and unimpressed with what you find because I just had to detox uh, and detach from it um, because I was constantly comparing my life and my career to other people that do the same things that I do. So for me, like there's a hundred of y'all in here, if you want to connect with me, you're going to get my cell phone number at the end of this. You call me. We sit down and share physical space together. Um, so 
because that's where that's what true connection is. We're more digitally connected than we've ever been, but we're more physically, mentally, emotionally, spiritually disconnected than we've ever been to our bedroom, right? And and, and so um, when I was given the topic, when they shared the topic with me, in like um, that wasn't intimidating at all, like because I've been on this journey of ending. Uh, for, for several years now, and the ending that I've set out to um, experience or accomplish is ending a more mentality, having a more mentality, um, and because and I believe a more mentality is, you know, what has led to, you know, you think of every atrocity that humans have contributed to, it, you know, I think it can be pinpointed to having a war mentality, whether it's slavery, whether it's, you know, uh, you know um, pollution, exploitation uh, of, of the oppressed in whatever form or fashion that takes, crime, rape, uh, whatever, um, you know, you can think of, debt, uh, you know, being in debt, and all these things stem from, you know, a war mentality. Exploitation, extraction, and depletion of our resources. It's all a war mentality. Um, and, you know, a lot of sickness and disease, you know, that are preventable sicknesses and diseases, more mentality. And, 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 and so I've been on this quest and this journey to end um, that in my, my own life and, you know, live it out the best that I can live it. Um, just be a living example of, of what it looks like and feels like to end the war mentality. Um, this is a very, uh, or I want this to be a very organic experience. I know they ask the same time at the end for questions, but anytime I say something that you know you feel like you want to interject or ask a question or get clarification on, by all means, you know, my mom always said, close mouths don't get fed. So um, ask for what you need, get what you came for. You all showed up here for some reason, and I, it, and I want you to get what you came for, either by interrupting uh, or by talking to me afterwards. So um, I want you to leave full. Uh, so uh, if, if we can go that first, or the next slide, I guess. There's no clicker. Um, no clicker. So the end of more, and then the one after that is lessons from the real world, and then the one after that is if we, oh, you're going to have to do work. Just click all the guys. <laughs> this is our mindset. Um, if we do more, then we'll have more, and then we'll be more. This is how our culture is constructed. And, and this, is, this is theory. This is not the gospel. This is just my opinion. Okay? Here, to hear my opinion. This is my opinion. This is how um, our society is set up. If we do more, then we'll have more, and then we'll be more. If we do more what? If we do more work, if we do more school, if we do more social media, if we do more networking, if we do more exercise, if, if we do more prayer, if we do more whatever, more, 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 uh, I'm going to do more of whatever it is, so then we'll have more, um, and I, 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 I kind of narrowed down to like five or six categories. Um, we do more so that we can have more money, power, fame, status, and stuff, right? That's what we want to have more of. Money, power, fame, status, and stuff, um, in an effort to be more happy, or be more popular, or be more significant. We're on this search for significance, this quest to matter. We all want to matter. So uh, let me do more on social media, because the more validation I get on social media, it makes me matter more. I want to matter more. Um, and, and, and so I'll uh, do more to have more to matter more. Right? And while it's a, like, like we think we're going to matter more, but what ends up happening is increased stress, increased anxiety, increased exhaustion, our physical health depletes, our mental health depletes, our spiritual health depletes, all these things get depleted in the process. You may get the money, you may get the power, the fame, the status, the stuff, um, but at what cost, right? I was in Malaysia a couple years ago, and um, I was there for a week working in a private school, um, uh, uh, an American private school, and uh, working with the seniors. And 
Uh, I was there to talk about this, adding cash to your process, or and, and process to your cash. Um, and I'm working with the seniors, and about halfway through the week, uh, a young man, a senior in high school, uh, approached me, and, 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 and he was shaking and in tears. He's a varsity basketball player, good looking kid, shaking and in tears, like he was involved, and, and I was like, whoa, what's going on? So let me uh, back up and give you some context. Prior to going there, conversations with the administration said, the principal said, you know, we had to get rid of class rankings for our seniors. Said a lot of schools are doing it. Let me tell you why we got rid of it. Said our highest ranking senior has a 4.5 GPA. Our lowest ranking senior has a 4.2. It makes no sense for us to rank these students from the top to bottom, highest and lowest. However, the levels of stress, anxiety, fear of failure, pressure to perform are off the charts and a lot of our students are making unhealthy choices as a way to cope with the stress and the pressure to perform the pressure to be perfect all the time. So that was the context and now they're bringing me in to talk to these young people about adding passion to your process and process you need to know to your personal life. So this kid comes up to me shaking and in tears. I was like, what's going on? He's like, you're here talking to us about finding our passion and our purpose and all this stuff. He said, I'm scared to death to tell my parents that I don't want to go to Harvard and study law, that I want to be an elementary school teacher. I'm so scared because I know how disappointed they're going to be. I know how upset they're going to be. And, and I don't know what to do. And, and so you're telling me to pursue my passion? I'm not, I, I, I don't have permission. I'm not allowed. Right? This kid, very successful on paper, 4 point whatever GPA, varsity basketball, good looking, you know, white, uh, you know, very successful on paper, right? Um, but was he thriving? Absolutely not. So, while, so what I'm saying is money, power, fame, status, and stuff, they can guarantee your success on paper, your measurable success, but money, power, fame, status, and stuff do not guarantee you are thriving, right? However, if you are thriving, and I can get into what thriving means, um, then it pretty much guarantees you'll experience some measures, uh, some levels of measurable success as well. Maybe money won't matter as much, power won't matter as much, status, fame, stuff, all those things may not matter as much, but you'll, you'll, you'll probably, you may not have more, but you're most likely going to have enough. And that's where I'm striving to get to, where I have, feel like I have enough, and where I have a healthy understanding of what enough is. Because, you know, that's very um, subjective. Is that right? Subjective, subjective. I always get those mixed up. Right? It's very subjective, right? Enough. Well, what is enough? And, and so, to me, less is more. So, um, you know, uh, you know, I've done a lot of detoxing, you know, in digital spaces and even in, you know, physical spaces as well. So, um, do more, have more, and then we'll be more. This is uh, our, our, our mindset. This is that young man's mindset. This is what he was being taught to believe. And uh, I, my theory is that we need to flip that. And you flip it, <laughs> and so, now this one will slow down. Uh, so, how, how to thrive? If we strive to be more trustworthy, respectful, thankful, and helpful, like this is what I call the keys to the kingdom. As a creative, as an artist, as an activist, as an entrepreneur, as a parent, as a member of, of a, as a as a member of, a, of an improv team, if you make this your mission to be known for these four things. The world is yours. Trustworthy, respectful, thankful, and helpful. Really quickly, I'll break in, and then you are thriving. This is how to thrive. Be known for being trustworthy, respectful, thankful, and helpful. In that order of priority, Amy Cuddy, she's a behavioral psychologist from Harvard. She did 15 years of research on first impressions. Some of you probably read her book, The Power of Presence. Um, she said the first two impressions people come to about you and there's a theory that she didn't talk about called the 7-11 theory. In the first seven seconds, people come to about 11 conclusions about you. 
She said the first two conclusions people come to about you are number one, can I trust you? Number two, do I respect you? Now I've you know, I extrapolated that and kind of you know came up with definitions of trustworthy and respectful that 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 connected with me. And uh, because we hear those terms all the time, but they're very abstract. Um, in a lot of ways. So trustworthy means, to me, it means consistent care and consideration of others. And the key word is consistent care and consideration. All the time care, meaning you can't just care when it's easier or convenient for you. We've all had friends who only came, or family, who only came around, who only showed up, who only acted like they cared when it was easier or convenient for them. You can't trust people. You can't trust people that only care when, you're, when it's easier to be for them. If you've been on a sports team, you can't trust your teammates that only care when they know they're getting a lot of playing time or they know they're starting. You know, if you have if you have coworkers, you can't trust coworkers that only care when it's easier to be for them. You know, and, and so consistent care and consideration is what trustworthiness means to me. All the time, care. respectful again, an abstract term. And then that I had to make it simple for me. To me, respect means recognizing someone else's value. That's what respect is, recognizing someone else's value. Um, and, and, and think about if you've ever been disrespected by something somebody said or did to you, what you really felt was, if you recognized my value, you would not have said that or you would not have done that, right? And um, in, in Zulu, uh, in, in Zulu culture, they have a, a word, a greeting, uh, saubona. Saubona, that's how they greet one another in, in, in South Africa. And, and, and that literally means, I see you, right? Saubona, I see you, I recognize your value. The response when someone says uh, saubona is sakona. Sakona uh, means I am here. Another definition of Sakona is you have brought me into existence, right? And so when I do workshops with young people, that's one of the first things we do. We exchange that greeting, Saubona, I see you. And, and the response is Sakona, or thank you for bringing me into existence. We all want to matter, right? We all want to be brought into existence. We've all been in rooms where we felt like or at parties, or events, or experiences, where we're like, man, if I disappeared right now, and nobody would notice, right? Because no one has brought me into existence. No one has seen me. Um, trustworthy, respectful, thankful. We know what thankful means. For how I became thankful, like my process for becoming thankful, is I'm just really ridiculously simple. I just make a gratitude list every day. I write down every every morning. I write down um, three to five things that I'm thankful for when I'm doing my morning page in my journal. Part of the thing I'm intentional about is writing three to five things or more than uh, that I'm thankful for. And so now, like your brain, where your brain fires, it hard fires. So like as a somebody who travels a lot, I used to be very notorious for, I was that guy that went into customer service experiences looking for a fight. Like whether it was rent cars, restaurants, hotels, airlines, I'm looking for a fight because I can write a real nasty letter to corporate so I can get some free stuff, right? I knew how to do that, play that game. But what I figured out, like how I didn't realize how toxic that was for me, and it was really, um, you know, it was I was killing my spirit because every time I went into a customer service experience, I was looking for something wrong. Right? So I could write that letter and get, it wasn't worth the payoff, definitely wasn't worth it because it was destroyed and it was killing my spirit, right? And so I had to, and, but I was wiring, I was programming my brain to always look for the negative. You find what you're looking for. And so I had to rewire my brain, literally rewire the, 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 the brain. And I had to rewire it by starting to make a gratitude list and turning that complaint box, you know, that box that we that is somewhere in this a building probably, it's not called a complaint box, but that's all we reserve for, the comment box. Uh, 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 you know, so we go to places looking for the negative. And so I turned that complaint box into a compliment box and made sure I wrote a compliment and dropped it in the box or wrote a compliment on my receipt or whatever. I was looking for things to be thankful for. 
And, I, and, I, and so my life, how I live my life, I call it treasure hunting. I go on a treasure hunt every day. Every day, from the time I wake up to the time I go to bed, I'm looking for things to be thankful for. And you find what you're looking for. So every morning when I wake up, I get to write down all the treasures that I found the day before. Right? And um, helpful, what I would say the definition of helpful um, that, that I use is, you know, people, um, you can either um, wait for opportunities to help or look for opportunities to help. And I look for opportunities. If we strive to be more trustworthy, respectful, thankful, and helpful, then, we'll, then we tend to do less, wondering, watching, worrying, and working. And people wonder what the work, why put working on there. The work you do doesn't feel, it's not as exhausting. If, you're, if it's not connect, uh, connected to wondering, watching, constantly worrying what other people are doing. When the work isn't connected to comparison to others, it's not as exhausting. You're not doing it when you're not long, no longer doing the work for money, power, fame, status, and stuff. You're no longer physically, spiritually, mentally, emotionally exhausted anymore. So it feels it might be hard. You might get more out, but you won't be exhausted by the work. Um, if we focus on being more, we end up doing less, and then we'll actually have more peace of mind, body, and spirit, which is all I think at the end of the day. If you really ask yourself what you're striving for, that's all we're striving for: is peace of mind, body. And Period. We've been convinced or tricked into believing that money, power, fame, and status and stuff will bring us that. It's bullshit. It's that will come out. Yeah. Um, and, and, and so that, that's where I'm, and so for me, I found that ending my moral mentality has gotten me closer to peace of mind, body, and spirit. I'm not there yet. I'm saying I'll never be there. I'm fine with never being there, getting there. I'm just enjoying the journey and, and loving the process. Um, so that's that's all I got. I think I might be out of time. These are uh, my reading list. These are three books that radically changed my life. Um, the Artist's Way. Um, it is super dope. I mean, these what I call the before and after books for me. Like there was before these books, Javier, and then after these books, Javier. Um, the Artist's Way taught me my morning page process, my morning writing process. And that was a total game changer as a creative. Uh, happiness hypothesis reframed my, my outlook or perception of what true happiness was. Um, and then the one thing, David mentioned all the things that I'm connected to, involved in, whether it's comedy or poetry or storytelling or being an author or running a, a marketing firm, uh, which is, you know, I have, I have a marketing firm called Reach Communications. All our marketing is focused on health and wellness marketing. Uh, so we work with a lot of universities, a lot of nonprofits. Uh, um, Ohio Health Education Services is one of our biggest clients. And all our marketing campaigns are uh, focused on health and wellness, teaching people how to thrive and, and how to cope in healthy, positive, and productive ways. And primarily for poor, disenfranchised communities, uh, black and brown people, uh, who experience the highest levels of trauma. Uh, in, 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 our, in our country. And so, all that stuff that I do, the one thing was the book that helped me like figure out what my one thing was. And some days I want to be full-time in comedy. Other days I want to be full-time in filmmaking. I, I, I work for studios as a script doctor, and so they send me their scripts and I edit them or rewrite them or, 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 or whatever they need me to do. Or sometimes I want to be full-time in marketing or, or whatever it is. And the one thing helped me like figure out what my one thing was, and for me it's impact. So everything I do, whether it's comedy, poetry, uh, being an author, uh, you know, working in marketing, it's got to be connected to impact or I'm not going to be a part of it. So um, that, that's my life, that's my love, and that's how I, I live. And I don't have anything else to say unless you have questions. Thank you.